Hey guys, it's Darwin, here today with some tips for hiking in the desert. Okay, so it might not look like it, but I'm actually in the desert right now in the high desert, high mountain desert, in the East Sandia Mountains right outside of Albuquerque, Mexico. So I am in the desert, even though it doesn't really look like it, I promise I am. So recently I did a section of the Continental Divide Trail hiking from Lordsburg, New Mexico to the Gila Wilderness, just south of here in a lot of desert. So today I figured I'd kind of give you a few tips and tricks that I found when hiking in the desert to make sure that you're prepared, you're not overheated, you're protected, and you're not dehydrated. All right, so number one, long sleeves and pants. So coming from doing a lot of hiking in the Midwest and on the East Coast, especially on the Appalachian Trail, I'm used to being able to hike all the time in shorts. And if you notice, a lot of through hikers will hike in running shorts. So being a newbie, last week, whenever I set out on the Continental Divide Trail, I left Lordsburg in what I typically hike in, which is running shorts. I soon found out about 15 miles after hiking that was a terrible idea. 15 miles of treading through the desert in the sun, beating down, completely scorched my legs. Now, it's kind of my fault I didn't put any sunscreen on, um, but regardless, if I would have had my pants on, I would have been a lot better protected and wouldn't have had such a bad sunburn. Even if you're doing a lot of hiking in high desert, like here in the East Sandias, it's still a good idea to wear long sleeves and long pants, because even though you are in some shade, a lot of times, especially up on the ridge lines, you pop out, the air is thinner, so you burn a lot quicker. Now, something that I recently started hiking in, especially now that I'm in New Mexico, I'm out in the sun a lot and the air is thinner, is a long sleeve hiking shirt. So I hike in the Columbia Silver Ridge Light long sleeve, which has nice sun protection and has a UPF 40 rating. So not only are the long sleeves protecting me for not burning, but the actual material itself is made to reflect the sun. Now the pants that I typically hike in and I eventually switch to day two of my CDT hike are the Cool Renegade pants. Now the Cool Renegade pants are actually UPF 50. So again, not only do they have that full protection on the leg, from the sun, but it also reflects the sun with that UPF 50. So those are really nice to have too. Just remember that when you're in the desert, especially a desert like New Mexico, you're in higher elevation. So when you're at higher elevation, the air is thinner and you burn quicker. Number two, sunscreen. So not necessarily sunscreen for your arms and your legs, because if you're wearing long sleeves and long pants, you have that taken care of, but sunscreen for your face and for your ears. Even when you're wearing a hat, still there's a lot of times where your face and your ears can burn very easily. So just putting on a little bit of sunscreen definitely helps out with that. Another place that I like to apply sunscreen when I'm hiking in the desert is actually on my knuckles. Um, so when I'm grasping my trekking poles, all of this isn't completely scorching. Some people like to hike with gloves. Uh, you'll see a lot of people that are hiking like that first 700 miles of the PCT, hike with like a UV protective white glove. Those are nice too, but typically a good sunscreen helps. I'm a big fan of Joshua Tree sunscreen. Um, believe it or not, it's not made in Joshua Tree, it's made in Michigan, but that stuff is all natural, has a really high zinc in it, and it also has coconut oil, um, and a few other really great things for your skin. So not only is it protecting you from the skin, but it's also keeping your skin nice and moist so it doesn't get dry and it doesn't burn easy. I became a big fan of that stuff when I was on the Arizona Trail last October, especially when I was hiking through the Grand Canyon. If you watch some of that footage, you'll see that it's just kind of caked all over my cheeks and my ears. I really wanted to make sure my face didn't completely burn. To a degree, I can deal with sunburn on my arms and legs, but man, when it's on your face and ears, God, it hurts. So speaking of protection for your face, number three is wear a hat. Now, if most of you probably noticed, I am a big fan of the Meshback Trucker hat. I have a lot of them, and typically it's what I wear when I hike. That being said, in that section of the CDT that I just got back from, there was a lot of times where I wish I would have had a full brimmed hat. 
a lot of times I actually have to use my buff and I put it over my ears because even with sunscreen and even with a little bit of shade from a hat, my ears will get roasted very, very easily. So having a complete full brimmed hat is a really good idea. And whenever I do the PCT next year in 2018, I'm gonna opt for one. Even though I'm a big fan of these, I'll opt for much more shade protection. I know there's some hiking hats that also have kind of like a little shade right here. Um, so I might check out one of those too, but definitely have some sort of a hat to give your face and your head some sort of shade. Super important whenever you're out in the desert. Number four, shade. Um, this is kind of a new one for me, and for a while I kind of debated if I wanted one or if I didn't want one. I've heard some debate back and forth with through hikers that have done the PCT and the CDT, if they liked them or they didn't like them, but something like the Six Moons Design Silver Shadow Umbrella. Uh, this thing is really excellent, especially when you're on really long stretches where there's not gonna be any shade at all. It's really nice to be able to create your own shade. So when I was out on the CDT, I didn't so much use it on the trail, but there are sections of the CDT where you're doing really long road walks. Um, going into Silver City, I had a 13 mile road walk. So this guy really helped protect me and give me some shade while I was walking down that road. So definitely check these out. I really like this guy. Um, I'm gonna be doing a review on it soon, a full review. Um, again, at first I didn't really think that I would like it, but after having it out on the CDT for those seven days, I can tell you I utilized it quite a bit and it really saved my ass in giving me some shade and getting away from the sun. And number five, uh, probably the biggest one, water. Um, again, coming from the AT, I was used to carrying like a liter of water at a time because you come so close to so many springs, streams, little lakes, so you can constantly filter water. Out in the desert, totally different story. So a big learning curve for me was not only just carrying more water, but carrying more capacity for water. So when I did the section of the CDT, I carried four liters. So I was able to carry four liters at one time most of the time I only carried three, and in the section that I did, I really only needed to carry two, but I had the option if I needed to carry four liters. In the first day, there was a 10 mile stretch starting out where there was absolutely no water. So those three liters came in really, really handy. Now, even when I got to that water source, it was a cattle tank and it had a dead floating rat in it. So I had to hike five more miles to get a real water source. So 15 miles before I was able to fill up on water. So think about that. Think about that uh, in the AT term. You know, a 15 mile day is like an entire day for most through hikers on the AT. So it's not being able to filter any water at all, all day long. So having that ability to carry extra water whenever you know that you're gonna have a longer stretch without it is super important. It is really easy to get dehydrated out in the desert, not only in the flat desert, but also in the high peaks of the desert, so like in the mountains. Whenever you're up in higher elevation, closer to the sun and the air is thinner, it dehydrates you even more. So make sure you carry enough water. All right, so hopefully that gave you a few tips on hiking in the desert, whether you're planning on doing a PCT hike where that first 700 miles is all desert, a CDT hike where the first state is all desert, or maybe you're just planning on coming hiking here in New Mexico or Utah. Hopefully those tips helped. And uh, I was happy to get out for seven days and kind of put those things to the test and kind of torture myself, get sunburnt, not have shade, be able to go really long periods without having water just so you guys don't have to. So, you're welcome. If you haven't got a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I've been posting a lot of new photos, plus I posted a lot of photos from my section of the CDT, so go check those out if you haven't already. Go ahead and like or dislike this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and as always guys, thanks for watching.